the summer is well and truly over. And as we approach the autumn and winter months on the farm, a lot of things change. Our cows are still out grazing, but we only have about two weeks grass left in front of them. This field will probably be the last field that the cows are gonna graze of 2024. Almost all of the young stock on the farm are now housed and we are really starting to make a dent in our silage. We're also in a mad panic this week to get the last of the slurry out before the slurry ban. And we are really well into calving by this point. So summer's over and we're getting into our autumn and winter routine. And what that means for me is that my life can finally get into some sort of routine again after the absolutely crazy summer we had on the farm. And I'm gonna use that ability to carve out some time for other stuff to start a new project. And it all starts with what's in that box. So what is the new project? I am going to completely redesign and recode my GPS systems. For those of you who don't know, for the last two years, I have been manufacturing and selling GPS systems. And this is what the interface looks like. I now have a really good proof of concept with these systems and the hardware and the way I'm doing it is now proven. But they are very time consuming to manufacture and they cost me a lot of money to manufacture. The high cost of my current design along with two other important things that have changed have led me to decide to do a full redesign. The first thing that has changed is that the Raspberry Pi 5 was released this spring. The old GPSs use a Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 5 has twice the performance in the same sized package. Other than the change to the Raspberry Pi, the other big change is the touch screens that are available. This is a great touch screen, tough and glass, it's really bright, but it is only single touch compatible. So there is no pinch to zoom on this touch screen. Which brings us to our box. This new touchscreen is multi-touch enabled, which means I can do the pinch to zoom. That might not sound like a big deal, but there is other benefits to using this touchscreen as well. The main one being it is about half the price of the touchscreens that I was using. And price is really gonna be a big focus on this new version of the GPS. Another key motivation for me for wanting to rewrite all of the code is that I'm finally going to be able to implement auto steer. So I'm gonna catch up with you all tomorrow. We will be doing slurry in the morning and then hopefully by the afternoon, I will have time to get this all set up and working. I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome back to Thursday afternoon. So we've been at slurry all morning but we've been slightly struggling to get the slurry out of the tanks. Before we even got started slurry today I had to put three load of water into the tank and get it all mixed up for an hour but thankfully we finally got this tank emptied. Well pretty much emptied there's maybe one more load in it. I've just taken the pump out so let's get the slats back on the tank. I worked out how much slurry we still had on the farm two days ago. Oh, that is not attached. This is meant to pivot. Oh, my goodness, these are useless. Really not a good design. Every single one of them has had the bolts rot. Ugh. Yeah, both sides are broke. Flip my light. Ugh. Right, give me a minute. <laughs> Make all these safety features. And then you still end up doing stupid stuff like this. That's a dangerous way to do it. Let's not do it that way. Let's do it this way. Yes, much safer than leaning over the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound effects are optional, but they do help. Line it up. There we go. Success. And it's safer. Perfect. Yeah. Right, as I was saying, 
I measured all of the slurry tanks two days ago and we had 220,000 gallons of slurry left on the farm. Which sounded like a lot, but you can't get the last 100,000 gallons because it's all the last 20 centimeters in each tank. There's also a big tank of water down there, which will be spread next week. So really we only had about 120,000 gallons of slurry left two days ago. And that's probably now down to about 70 or 80,000 gallons. But my goodness is that last 70 or 80,000 gallons a real pain to get out. Probably don't need to get it out, but when we have such amazing good weather in October, we're gonna get it out just to give us extra runway come springtime. So I don't have to stress about slurry at all this year. I have about 30 centimeters left in that far tank. There's 40 centimeters left in the collecting yard tank. There's 40 centimeters left in this tank. There is basically nothing left in the beef tank and the heifer tank has 40 centimeters as well, but it's really, really thick. And it's that thick stuff which is the problem. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna cart three or four load of water into that heifer tank, get it mixed so we can get that last 40 centimeters of thick slurry out. But that's basically gonna take up most of tomorrow just to get that tiny bit of slurry gone. But I'm not gonna complain, the weather's amazing. We'll have all our tanks emptied by the 16th of October, which is when the slurry van starts. So I'm happy. We need this tractor for our next job today, which is an interesting job. I need to check that this tractor fits into our cow house. I'm pretty sure it will, but I'm just gonna check. Oh, it'll definitely fit, 100%. That's the doors we need to go through there on the left. Is it gonna fit? Oh, I'm really not sure anymore. It's not gonna fit. This is actually a big problem if this doesn't fit. No way. No way. You're kidding me. I'm gonna have to get out and see. Oh, okay, I think we're okay, but that exhaust has very little clearance. I'm just gonna set you down and listen and pay attention because I don't want to crack a second roof. I think we're okay. How close is that? I mean, it's close and I definitely need to lift them electric cables, but it does fit. So why is it important that the Puma fits into our cow house? Well, it's because I'm getting a feeder wagon next week for the first time ever on this farm. Getting a feeder wagon is a key part of my strategy to make it through the winter with enough silage because we are so short this year. And I plan to put it on this Puma and it really needed to fit into that cow house or I had a big problem. We'll find out next Saturday if the feeder wagon that arrives fits into the cow house, which is also in no way a guarantee. Whilst I'm here, I should probably take this GPS out for winter as well. Oh, these sticky things are so good, too good. All of the GPSs are designed to be super easy to move between tractors. And that is another key consideration of the new system that I'm developing. Well, I'll leave the power cable and the antenna attached. It'll be fine over winter. So before Calvin gets back and I'm covered in slurry again, because I have to move the pipes to a different tank, let me give you an update on how I got on with the new GPS system last night. My coating slippers on. So just as a recap, this is the old screen. This is the new screen with the new Pi 5. Let me turn it on and show you the kind of performance I'm able to get out of this new computer. I do have to log in and start it manually from the command line. This is still very bare bones, but let me give you a really quick little demo of recording an AB line. So we're going along our headland, happily spreading our fertilizer. And when we get to the far end of the field, we just hit our AB line and that has plotted our curved line, which now we can follow as we go back down the field. Let's zoom in a wee bit. Perfect. One of the key reasons for switching to the multi-touch screen was so that I can do pinch to zoom, but we'll not implement that in this video. Anyway, that's the update from the GPS. I will be coding at this for the next three months, including adding the auto steer, 
So stay tuned for lots more information on how I'm getting on. But now Calvin's back, so I'm gonna go and fill this last load of slurry out of that tank. I'm just running from one job to the next. Speed, I've gotta help him back in. Oh, he's too far back. This will definitely be the last load. You might get one more load out of it. Maybe. Hi, maybe. The, no, this is the last load from here. Right. Go to the collecting yard next time. It'll be a lot thinner than that. I put three load of water in and we took five load out. <laughs> right, so that's back on. Let's go put the pipe into the other tank. And we have another cow calved. Probably another heifer. I think I've only got one bit of calves so far this year. It's pretty good going. I'll put her in at the start of the milking and milk her and tube that calf. So it'll be like two or three hours after it's born. So that's perfect for giving it decent. Now we will move the pipe to the new tank. I'm going swimming in two or three hours. And I have no change of shorts, so I really can't afford to get these dirty. I go from writing code for an advanced GPS system to getting covered in slurry, putting a pipe into a tank. All while recording it to make a video on YouTube. Ah, <sighs> what a weird life. Oh, I just got covered in slurry, no! <laughs> Is it acceptable to go into a slumming pool with cow manure on your legs? I'm not sure. The cows are so happy grazing at the minute with the good weather. It really is doing a lot to make up for the awful year we had. Welcome back to Friday morning. We have one final job to do before we end this video. We have to take the head off the harvester because this is going down to get serviced in Tullamore tomorrow morning. So for those of you not from Ireland, I live in Oma and Tullamore is at least a three hour drive south. And that's in a Jeep, not a tractor. So it's a bit of an ordeal to get it down to the JF Centre in Tullamore, but I want this properly gone over this winter. All the bearings changed, new chains. There's a crack in the main frame needs repaired as well. So they're gonna have to strip it all apart, do a proper job of it. So that's why it's going three hours away tomorrow. I take the reel off, stick it into that trailer, and then the guy who owns the JF Center is coming up with his pickup and narrow wheels for the JF. He's gonna take the JF, I'm gonna take the reel. I've done it before, it works well, it's just a little bit of a faff. So that's the first thing we're gonna do this morning is get this head off. I'm gonna get the JTB to pull this out. I'm gonna set you up on that other camera so you can like see from far away. And then I'm gonna record this in portrait because I want to make a TikTok out of this and I'll stick that off to one side so you'll get the TikTok version but also like a wider frame to watch as well hopefully that makes sense okay first job is to pull this out and then I think we just have a PTO shaft to take off and three pins and that's the head off I'm going to do my first ever voiceover in a video. I watch a lot of videos and they all do voiceovers. So we're starting to take the reel off. The first job is to take off this PTO shaft. We should have greased this in hindsight. It was quite hard to get off. Um, eventually we just resort to prying it off with a big bar and hitting it. And it does work. Eventually we get that shaft off. Next job is to take off this little support on the bottom of the pickup reel. This just stops her from lifting too high. I almost forgot about it, thankfully David reminded me. And at this point, we're ready to try to take the pins out. Now this is where things get challenging. <laughs> they are much harder to get out than we expected. I have sped this up because this is a 20 minute ordeal trying to get these pins out. The pin on the left hand side came out easy enough, but this pin on the right just would not come out. Eventually, a lot of hammering and a bit of WD-40 got it out. Next job is to attach the belt to the two lift points. It is really not handy on the reel, but it's the only way to lift it. It's just a really awkward object. I give Calvin the camera at this point to video, and um, he is not going to be a future cameraman for me, that is for certain. Um, his footage is questionable. It's okay, 
But the point where he really screws up is he just gets bored and sets the camera down in the next couple of seconds. But he got some footage. You can see it's not an easy object to lift. There is only two lift points on it and they're at the back. So we kind of just drop the reel on the roller. Not the best, but it is what it is. We got it moved. Eventually I realized I have to now recenter the belts because I couldn't get far enough across because of the drawbar. We do eventually get it lifted onto the trailer. I don't think we damaged anything. So I am going to count that as a success. If you keep an eye on Calvin here, just as we end this, you will see the point where he gets bored <laughs> and just sets the camera down and walks away. <laughs> what a man. So that is the reel off the harvester and it's ready pretty much to head on a three hour drive down to Tullamore. It will be getting narrow wheels fitted in the morning and then the plan is to hook the harvester onto the guy's pickup. It's a big massive like American style pickup. It needs that to tow this thing. And then I'm gonna follow behind with the trailer and the reel and bring it down separately. Wide wheels, this thing's like 3.4 meters. So without doing all of them things, we'd probably need an escort. <laughs> so why am I sending my JF down to the JF center in Tullamore? Well, it's gonna get a really thorough check over and a really thorough service. So I last sent it down two years ago. And then last year I serviced it myself on the cheap. And my plan going forward is to probably get it serviced every two years. The bottom roller needs replaced on the harvester because it got damaged whenever that bolt came loose earlier in the year. That bolt is still coming loose, so it needs looked at. There is a crack in a, the main frame in a really awkward place. So they're probably gonna have to take like the drum and everything out to get that crack welded properly. It was welded when I first got it, but it's broke again since, so I want it done properly this time. And since they're gonna have the drum out and probably have the rollers off, I'm going to get them to replace all of the bearings at the same time. We're also going to replace the chains, just check everything over and make sure it's all good for 2025. The rail is also going to get reconditioned, which just means changing some of the wearing parts, checking it's all good and putting it back together again. So it is not an insignificant amount of work that's going to happen on it and that probably takes people who knows what they're doing, which is why I'm sending it all the way down to the JF Centre. Anyway, now I forgot my jumper. Now that that job's done, we are gonna get back at the slurry. We hopefully have seven or eight loads to go out today, and that'll be another one of the tanks emptied. Okay, I think that is gonna do us for this week's video. A little behind the scenes for you all is I have recorded so much footage that it panics me how I am gonna edit this video into some sort of coherent story. <laughs> but I suppose in fairness, that does represent the week I have had. It's kind of been one of them weeks where you're just jumping from one job to the next. There's no consistency, there's no plan, it's just a week of firefighting and trying to get stuff done. So the rest of my day involves doing some more slurry, hopefully getting some more coating done. And I also have to get two new tires on my Discovery for the long drive in the rain with the heavy harvester rail on behind me tomorrow morning. I'm not saying the tires on my Discovery were bald. I'm just saying I would rather have a new set of front tires before I do the drive to Tullamore. Hopefully I can edit this video into something which is acceptable. If I have managed that and you think I have managed that, please do give this video a like. Any comments, stick them down below. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I would really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching. Next week, we are definitely doing a video on a topic because they are so much easier than trying to video what I get up to in a week on the farm. Anyway. I'll see you all next Saturday. We might have a midweek video. It probably won't be on Wednesday, but I'm not sure yet.